Uh, telling you a little bit about my story, the story of Wikipedia, uh, projects that I'm working on, and I'll try to tie it to broader trends on the internet. Uh, and one of the things that I really want to focus on, particularly uh, because I'm talking to a lot of students, uh, is failure, uh, because I think that's a really important part of it. So you could just, from your desk, you could order lunch and have it delivered, which, by the way, today is a very, very big business in Chicago. Uh, but at the time, the result was failure. Jimmy Wales is good at it. Uh, in 1996, when I was trying to do this, Restaurant Owners uh, was a search engine. Um, I had uh, what I thought was a brilliant business idea. First of all, the name was called Three Apes, and the slogan was, type your search and the apes will find it. Tell me that's not genius. I actually did this. The brilliant business idea was uh, pay-per-click advertising. There'd be two ways to pay. You could either actually pay for advertising on the site, or you could send traffic to the site and earn credits for advertising. So I thought this would be a way to grow the traffic and so forth. Anyway, the result, you can guess, failure. Jimmy Wales is good at it. Uh, Chinese spammers took over the site within three months. So the next thing uh, I came up with was uh, Newpedia. So again, a brilliant business idea. A free encyclopedia for everyone. Ooh, I'm starting to get familiar here. It would be written by experts. I hired a PhD in philosophy to help design it. Uh, what was the result? Failure. Jimmy Wales is good at it. I spent about $250,000 on the first 12 articles to be written. So then I had a really dumb idea. My really dumb idea was to have a free encyclopedia for everybody. I would open up a website, let anybody edit it. There will be no advertising. In fact, no sane business plan of any kind. Uh, and what was the result? Success. Even Jimmy can do it sometimes. Uh, Wikipedia, of course, has been a massive success. Uh, we're the number five website in the world, uh, changing the face of knowledge forever. Uh, it's a very inspirational project, and it takes me around the world to meet great people like you. So this is really great, and uh, so on the success of this, I thought, okay, my next project, and I, I decided to go back to search again. I thought the three apes thing was almost the right thing, uh, but I came up with the idea for a search engine, Wikia Search, where people would be able to edit the search results and so on. I, had a, I think it's quite an interesting idea. Uh, certainly, I, because Wikipedia had already been a great success, uh, we got a lot of attention. This is the cover of Fast Company magazine. And there's my picture. It says, Google's worst nightmare. I don't think that's true, but my mother bought 10 copies, so <laughs> it's okay in the end. So how was the result of this? Well, again, failure. Uh, Jimmy Wales is good at it. What happened here was, although the project was very promising and I was happy with the progress of the software, we realized it would take several million more dollars of investment beyond what we had already invested to become fully functional, and then the economic crisis came, and we realized there was going to be no possibility of raising new money for such a speculative project for a while. So we closed the project. Uh, how many people know the TV show Lost? Have you, you see the, yeah, TV show Lost. How many of you actually understood the TV show Lost? Oh, one guy. Probably because he was on Lostpedia, uh, which is uh, a community site that is the ultimate document of everything having to do with the TV show Lost. They've written over 5,000, no, no, over 7,000 articles. The show's interesting things about the Lostpedia site is that uh, the, uh, I know the creator of the show, J.J. Abrams, I mean, he told me, you know, oh, we love Lostpedia. We use Lostpedia all the time. And there was an interview in a magazine with the head writer uh, telling about this story when they were stumped. They, had, they were going to refer to Canada, but they couldn't remember how they had done it in the past. Uh, they didn't know quite what to do, so they looked it up in Lostpedia. Uh, and what they found in Lostpedia is that every time someone mentions Canada on the show, they're lying. Uh, but now I think I'll just uh, bring it to a close, because I think the most interesting uh, part of the show uh, is uh, questions and answers. So I'm really eager to hear from you. Well, uh, you know, it's interesting because for Wikipedia, one of the things that we're very uh, insistent on is having reliable sources. Uh, and to get to reliable sources, it's really important that we have very old-fashioned editorial processes and so forth. When we think about w do people get information from the internet or from some other source, uh, digitally or from paper, I think we should keep those two separate questions. How it gets delivered is a completely separate question from how it gets produced. I think, you know, uh, the future uh, clearly lies with electronic books, uh, magazines, newspapers, and so forth. I don't think paper's going away anytime soon, uh, but I think what is important is that we have good editorial processes 
so that what information we are getting has gone through a thoughtful process to try to ensure as much accuracy as possible. And I think that there's an interesting opportunity to do a bit of a hybrid uh, where you know that the final product, because it's written by specialists for specialists, uh, needs to be written in a certain style, to a certain standard. Um, then you need you know, the really active participation of experts. Uh, at the same time, I think this kind of group collaboration where, where instead of having two or three people working together, you have 100 people working together could be quite uh, powerful. And I'm not seeing anybody really attempt that. I think there's still a tendency to think it's either totally top-down and controlled like Newpedia or like Wikipedia, and I would be excited to see some attempts in the middle somewhere. Well, what answer would I like to find in Wikipedia? Well, I go in, on Wikipedia all the time, and I find, uh, particularly in English Wikipedia, it's harder and harder to find something that isn't in Wikipedia. Uh, it's com very, very comprehensive. Uh, but sometimes I do, I, I find some subject, and I realize, wow, it's, it's quite a short article. It doesn't really tell me what I wanted to know. So, but there's lots of those. I think there's still, as big as English Wikipedia is, I think there's still room uh, for improvement and uh, lengthening and deepening a lot of the, a lot of the entries. Uh, in terms of the, the future of copyright law, I think it's very interesting. I mean, we're going through a period of, of big transition there. Uh, I'm, I am not uh, opposed to copyright law, uh, but I do think that copyright law for a long time has been moving in the wrong direction. Uh, we keep seeing longer and longer term for copyright, um, which is not really consistent with um, what we want to do. My view is one of the problems we have is that copyright is currently one size fits all. And so you have very large commercial interests like Disney um, who desperately want to protect their older films because they're still making money out of them. Uh, and I think, fine, give it to them. I'm not really concerned about Disney's old films. They can make as much money as they want for as long as they want. I don't really care about that. What I care about is the uh, chemistry textbook that was written 20 years ago, has been out of print for 20 years. Uh, no one's doing anything with it. Uh, my community could take it, update it, extend it, give it for free to everyone in the world. And I think that's an enormous opportunity, enormous possibility. And so treating every possible thing as if it's the same thing is not, uh, not really viable. I think the other thing that I would like to see some reform on is, is reform on our ideas about sharing, uh, de minimis sharing, casual sharing amongst friends. The, this, this thing of uh, the record companies, uh, movie studios, uh, suing teenagers for copying movies is stupid. I mean, it doesn't, makes no sense at all. At the same time, when we see something like uh, they recently shut down Mega Uploads, uh, who are charging people money to access cl clearly copyrighted materials, to me it seems like that's clearly a large-scale criminal enterprise, and I understand we need to do something about that. Uh, and so finding a new balance uh, where, where certain kind of uses that the public really wants to do are okay. I mean, example, it's not that hard to go on. You can go on uh, YouTube and find videos uh, where the soundtrack has been suppressed. And what's the video of? It's a kid's birthday party, and in the background a song was playing. And so they have to cut out the, the... This is ridiculous, right? This is somebody's posting a kid's birthday party, and there's a little music in the background. This is casual use. Yes! It's casual use, right? This is not... If you want to compare that and say this is the same, if the law treats that as the same thing as mega uploads or as somebody making counterfeit uh, Chanel handbags or something like this, that's kind of, these are different things. At each different thing, we need to rethink the boundaries to say what is it that the public is trying to do? Is it really criminal? Is it really bad? Uh, you know, if I hear a great song and I send a copy to my friend, is that really a crime? It's a, you know, and it's it's the classic case of if you make things illegal that everybody in their normal moral conscience thinks is really no big deal, then you, you create widespread disrespect for the law and it makes it harder to do something about the real problems. So I think we're, we're, we're probably beginning to see uh, movement towards uh, working through change. And I think, I hope we've played a big part in that or that we will continue to play a big part in that. When we did our protest and shut down English Wikipedia for one day, 10 million people contacted the US Congress to protest this proposed law. I think now when Congress thinks about regulating the internet or changing copyright law, for the first time they're going to think, oh, we better think about what the people on the internet think, not just what Hollywood thinks, because a balance has to be struck here. <laughs>